Have we gone through Monster Hunter slaying monster after monster with no end in sight and wondered where do they keep coming from? How do they keep making more? Well, so have I and decided today I shall speculate and analyze the breeding methods or positions employed by the different monster groups, including some outliers. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let's start things off with the Fang Beasts, the monsters most similar to real life mammals, therefore the easiest to speculate. For you've probably seen monkeys banging at one point or another in your life, so you already know the monkeys can do the cowgirl or the doggy, eventually giving live birth. Not much mystery to that. This generic and realistic trend continues into Arceus, Lagambi, and Volvidon, with nothing to note besides the Lagambi's uncontrollable and destructive libido. Not even Gamma, the largest of the group, is particularly special when it comes to spawning in more of itself, although it most likely has a 30 inch magnum dong like real life elephants. <laughs> Carapaceons, a small group of monsters with little difference between its species and variants, so pinpointing one figures out the rest. It's debatable if they are more crab-like or hermit crab-like, but considering reproductive convenience, I'd say it's easier for the mating process to be that of the hermit crabs, for the crab's missionary piggyback style seems very uncomfortable and downright impossible for our carapaceons. On the other hand, hermit crabs don't ride each other and in fact slightly reveal their inner body doing the deed, one behind the other. Therefore, carapaceons do the hermit crab, bird wire Two distinct types must be considered here, the flying ones and the theropod species, which I'm assuming means raptor-like. For the purposes of this video, we can safely assume all lay eggs and we can safely discard live birth. As for the mechanics of the banging, we have to consider two types. The winged bird wyverns probably employ real-life birds piggyback riding to get the job done. As for the raptor-like cousins, it's a bit more complicated. I've never seen dino sex before, but I assume it would look kinda like this. Can't really pull hair, huh? So tentatively speaking, dinosaurs got that dog in them. Another odd group to analyze, the amphibians, only having Zamtrios, Tetsukabra, and Tetronodon. Now, I could make the assumption they mate, lay eggs in a body of water, and call it a day. Except that probably only applies to Tetronodon, due to the fact Tetsukabra and Zamtrios live in a variety of environments, some of which are not ideal for this sort of eggs. Therefore, after piggyback riding, it is very likely they live birth their young, or lay eggs on their backs carrying them until hatching, akin to Bollinger's Backpock Frog or the Suriname Toad. The Piscine, Piscine, the fish wyverns. These monsters are a mixture, taking into account that Jurotodus is quite similar to the mudskipper or the mudfish. So they most likely lay eggs in mud, similar to Baotodus that lays eggs, although to circumvent the low temperatures most likely carries them in a pouch or crevice. As for the infamous Plesioth, due to its shark-like appearance, I have to theorize it gives live birth like sharks, and just like sharks eat each other in the womb, so every Plesioth you see was the worst bastard of the bunch. It is also possible Lava Sia follows a similar method, but mostly because there's no way it's hotter inside than it is outside. And the breeding came plate, well, more piggyback riding but in liquid. Noticing a pattern here? Neopterons. Bugs, not much to them, also calls a kinky thing that likes bondage and after using the mates as a toy, eats it. Celtas are just as sinister, mind controlling males to death, would not recommend, they lay eggs. Temnocerons. The males must feed the females or distract them with Netflix to increase their chances of survival during and after the deed. Whilst the female is distracted, they must climb and direct deposit into their OnlyFans account. As for the Pyrognacodokis, their dick burns off. Worth noting, we probably only hunt females for the males are too small. The Brute Wyverns. Excluding some outliers that shall be covered in a moment, these monsters employ the dinosaur mating method, but on a larger scale. Most likely laying eggs. As for the outliers, Devil Joe definitely knows how to eat ass, Rikidius explodes without warning, and Bambara can go fuck itself. Leviathans. An interesting bunch. Here we can see aquatic piggyback riding as demonstrated with Plesioth, but on the other hand we can also imagine the land-based piggyback riding like with crocodiles. They mostly lay eggs according to my very methodical look at their LinkedIn, although Agnactor is debatable and would like to know your thoughts on this one. The Fanged Wyverns. Due to their general appearance, they most likely dog it out. Some employ hateful and malicious positions, such as with Maggie. Others wrestle it out. The Kadachis depend on who has the last fang, and as for the reptilian fanged wyverns, remember the crocodile piggyback riding? Well, the same thing, but this time Komodo dragons. As for if they lay eggs, I think it's safe to assume they do. And now, the flying wyverns. You've probably been waiting for this one. The biggest and most varied group. Some might be generic, others are unique. Such as Gravios passing a kidney stone, spawning in another Basarios. Kazu with a face a mother can't love. 
reproduces asexually, most likely by laying eggs in corpses it feeds on. The Diablo's perpetually horny, rough piggyback riding, it lays eggs. As for the T-Rex and its cousins, well, piggyback rides. T-Rex and Burial lay eggs, Nagakuga, based on my past research on the subject. They experiment with many positions and methods for the same end, and with its biology, I don't think it lays eggs. And instead, live births. Astelos definitely breeds like a butterfly, two dogs stuck together. I will not accept otherwise. Most here aren't worth noting or simply more of the same, except for the rafts. According to the most reputable source on the internet, Reddit comments, the Rathalos pins the Rathion on its back, spreading its legs and vigorously playing stick and cuff, resulting in a golden shower of genetic information. Which would explain the origin of Wrath Gleam, despite the brutality of it all, there is still love. Well, mostly inside Rathian, but it's there. Whereas with Nightshade Palumus, well, the mate gets Cosmeed and never sees the perpetrator again. And finally, Elder Dragons. You could draw up all kinds of breeding theories here, although some are confirmed or implied, such as Nargigante, asexually reproduces from a spike or something. And unlike what some may have you believe, they don't have a 30 inch long. On the other hand, the Magalas. They Probably through their virus, inadvertently modified creatures are forced to host a Baronug or Megala that pops out alien style. The Kirin mates with the Caucasoidal Femoid, also known as White Woman. Fatalis doesn't so much reproduce, instead he respawns on those that were with scales. Camellios puts that tongue to good use and employs the good old piggyback. Dolomadur, thank White Fatalis there aren't many alive, if not we'd see a snake breeding frenzy. One female amongst hundreds of males. This applies to the other snake wyverns, hence why I didn't properly mention them. I could go on and on about the Elder Dragons for they're exempt from the natural order, but did you know that in terms of human and monster breeding, Namiel is the most compatible monster for humans? Thank you for watching, like and sub if you enjoyed and let me know your theories on how monsters breed. And also I don't know what a Monster Hunter Stories is.